one of the most fascinating places on Earth. You know, sometimes it just feels amazing to be alive in a wild place like this. In this series, I'm exploring six of Australia's unique landscapes, from the red sands of the desert to the tropical waters of the Great Barrier Reef and the wetland floodplains. He's big, dangerous. On the trail of weird and wonderful animals found here and nowhere else. That's a great bridge, wasn't that beautiful? For a naturalist, this is one of the most inspirational places to visit on our entire planet. As I set out on an epic adventure into wild <laughs> Australia. <laughs> I'm flying to the other side of the world to visit one of the most alien and ancient places you can imagine. Australia's tropical rainforest. You know, the rainforest is an incredible place. It really is a land of light and shadows. Lots of places for things to hide away. And I guess it's understandable that people might feel a little bit scared of the rainforest. But you know, really, there's nothing to fear here. It's just a place to understand. It's so beautiful. I'm in the wet tropics on the northeastern coast of Australia. A strip of thick, exotic jungle sandwiched between the Great Dividing Range in the west and the Pacific Ocean in the east. I've visited the rainforest many times, but today I'm seeing it like I've never seen it before. I've been granted special access to the James Cook University Research Station. Their observatory crane stands 47 metres above the ground. From here, I get a whole new perspective. Wow. This is an incredible way to see rainforest. In the hectare below me, there are 85 different species of trees. And from here, I can look straight down into the canopy. I can see the, the mosaic of fruits that's to be found there. I can see birds, even green ant nests right up in the crowns of the trees. This rainforest is here because of those mountains. That's the Great Dividing Range. And they literally stop the moisture coming off of the sea, going inland. There's precipitation here that powers this incredible landscape. The wet tropics cover a tiny fraction of Australia, and yet around 40% of the country's plant and animal species live here. This dense forest feels like a secret world that time forgot, and it is. Today, the rainforest is a window on a world that once was. I often think about those 18th century explorers who came here. It was equivalent of going into outer space in these tiny vessels. You know, when you come from Europe, going into these environments feels just the same. You feel like an 18th century naturalist. Everything is so different. And this environment is one of the best to explore. And I simply can't wait. Going down into the rainforest, the sun becomes a distant memory as I pass layers and layers of leaves and branches that we call the canopy. It acts as a roof of vegetation with only a third of the sunlight reaching the ground. There is something mystical about being here. Walking in the dappled light, it feels like I'm in a cathedral and the trees are the building blocks. I think I found the altar. Just look at the buttresses on this tree. This is a crow's foot ash, and uh, it's got these incredible swirling ribbon-like uh, buttress roots. And the buttresses have a, a few functions. One of the reasons that trees in the rainforest put out buttresses like this is literally to support themselves. You can see it's got a very wide base because the soils here are so thin. Typical of rainforest, you only have a very small amount of soil which is one of the reasons they're so vulnerable to being deforested. Once the trees have gone and the roots are missing, the soil just washes off the hills. But the other thing is and that, that in these gullies between the, the buttresses, trees trap leaves. 
So they, they create their own compost to provide nutrients. And that's really why these buttress roots swirl so much, because you get these great buckets here, which sometimes can be like miniature gardens. I'm going to peer very carefully because sometimes in these buttresses you find snakes. That is really magnificent. They had a lot of uses too. Native people used them to make handles for tools, to make drums. They're quite resonant. And even shields. They are really beautiful. Makes you feel very small and insignificant when you're standing next to a buttress root like this. I guess in my lifetime I've had the opportunity to walk in some incredible rainforests across our planet. But I don't think any of those places is quite as special as here. Because this rainforest is the oldest on our planet. In fact, it's so old it stretches back to the time of the great supercontinents. It's hard to believe that this forest once stretched across most of the land surface to be found on our planet. 150 million years ago, Australia was part of a supercontinent that was covered in rainforest. It included all the Southern Hemisphere's continents. Millions of years later, Australia became detached from this supercontinent and started drifting away. Like a giant Noah's Ark, it carried all sorts of species of animals and trees. Like these fan palms whose fossils can be found in Antarctica. Walking deeper into the forest, there is one that particularly grabbed my attention. That's amazing. You can see it bends through 90 degrees twice here. Now, these palms grow at about 100 years every meter of length. So you can see that, well, one, two, three, five or 600 years ago, this fan palm was reaching up into the midpoint of the canopy, which is where it's supposed to be. And then some disaster befell it and it was flattened down. And then it would have grown again straight upwards for one, two, well, another 400 years. And then it was flattened again. But tenacious as it is, it's making the climb back up towards the light yet again, which it started, what, just under 100 years ago. What an amazing thing. It's a beautiful palm. And you can see here just the maj majesty of these leaves. They're truly glorious. Wonderful. This rainforest is so ancient that all life forms have had millions of years to perfectly adapt to their habitat. One of the fascinating things about the forest is the creatures that have developed the most amazing camouflage, like this stick insect. Look at that. If it doesn't move, you'd never know it was there. If you take your eye off it for a moment, you lose it. Incredible. You see where the wings there even make it look like a split in the stick. Quite amazing. And there are lots of other things too that hide away by reliance on camouflage. Like this mind-boggling moth larva, which evolved to look like lichen. Even the way it moves makes it seem as if it's been blown by the wind. Would you believe it's a caterpillar? And this awesome lichen spider, ready to pounce on a prey. It doesn't even need a web. Its camouflage is so evolved, its victims walk within its reach without a second thought. But one of my favorite masters of disguise is a miniature dinosaur look-alike. Now, that's a Boyd's Forest dragon. And uh, it's sitting quietly there. They uh, don't go out into the sun like many other lizards because the last thing they want in darkness is to be very hot because the predator that they most fear is the python in the top of the forest. The python can hunt in complete darkness because it can detect infrared. So uh, this little chappy here will try not to get too hot by the end of the day. He's relying totally on his uh, ability to remain hidden there. Beautiful. Oops, there you go. 
Now, time to pursue my journey further into the rainforest in search of some of the most bizarre and challenging animals in Australia. I'm in northeast Australia on a great expedition deep into the wet tropics rainforest. To get to my next destination, I'm using a trail that's anchored through 400 meters of jungle. This has got to be one of the best ways to see the tropical rainforest. And also, it's great fun. <laughs> I'm embarking on a journey through the air across the canopy. That's yeah. the way to do it, isn't it? Yeah. Joining me is local wildlife expert, Justin McMahon, who uses this zip wire for research. Wow, this is great. It's an interesting thought that this tower is actually where we're standing, seven metres above the ground. Yes. And that's the amount of rainfall they get here annually, seven metres. It's astonishing. It's enough. <laughs> <laughs> no time to dwell, though. Our route takes us onward. Amazing. You know, I can't tell you the number of days I slogged through a rainforest and never had this view. Yes. What's interesting, of course, the ground is falling away here. Yes. So we're now higher up in the canopy. It's, a, it's an exciting view of the rainforest. It's a real privileged view because, you know, you just don't see these things from ground level, do you? No, no, it's a whole other perspective from this, this high up. You can start to notice your, your layering, your ecotones within the environment. It really is a terrestrial reef. You know, on the reef you go to different depths, you get different life forms. And yes. here it's the same, different, different levels within the forest, a whole different ecosystem. The rainforest is built around one impetus, the plants need for sunlight. Biologists have called this scramble for light the battlefield. Each plant species tackles it in its own way. Some are soldiers waging war for the sun, others excel at finding allies, like these natural flower pots. I mean, these epiphytes are amazing. Yeah, they're quite amazing things. These. The way they survive without any soil. Just things like the crow's nest fern here, they catch leaf litter to create their soil, they create their mulch to get their nutrients, um, piggybacking on the back of mature trees. That one little refuge will, could be laden with so many different microbes, uh, geckos, spiders, the list goes on. The biodiversity just within one small um, patch of epiphytes can be, uh, yeah, quite a sight to I see. I mean, that's the secret of the rainforest, is it's got so much habitat, so many places for things to exist. This tree-dwelling carpet python is well aware that there is plenty of life here to feed on. It is using heat-sensitive sensors built into its jawline to locate warm-blooded prey. And epiphytes are perfect nests for him to warm himself and hide away in the canopy. On our way to the next platform, Justin tells me about the other animals that live up in the canopy. These are, these are your highways in the forest. It's quite amazing with the amount of life that will pass through here, daytime and nighttime. Um, through the day, butterfly species using the updrafts, the breezes to come through. Now I understand this little spot is where they often see the elusive tree kangaroo. This is a key area. Tree kangaroos are one of the weirdest mixes of animals you'll find on the continent. A kangaroo that lives like a monkey and looks like a bear. It's amazing to think of all these creatures moving in the canopy and incredibly difficult to study. Very, very difficult. As a researcher, you just don't get to see them that often. It's a nightmare to try and spot anything in here. I mean, it really is an incredible tangle. Usually, when I'm looking for hidden creatures in foliage, I let my eye drift along the vegetation until it focuses on something out of the ordinary. But here, it's a different ball game. I think I've seen something. From where I'm standing, it's difficult, but from the ground, my wildlife cameraman, Martin Haywood Smith, has a clear view, and it is indeed a tree kangaroo. It's a real coup. Martin is not one to keep his achievements quiet, so he's called me for a bit of a brag. How are you doing, Martin? How not you too bad. On? Absolutely fantastic, right? Just looking up bright. Look Absolutely that. fantastic. That's amazing. Isn't it wonderful? I understand why Martin is pleased. This is incredibly rare footage, and these are beautiful, intimate shots. 
But there you were. You were on the zip wire, zimming around. I saw a glimpse of a tail. Yeah, whoosh, yeah, gone. Yeah. And that's the tail I saw. So bizarre, a kangaroo up in the trees. The terrestrial kangaroo, as we know, originally came from trees. And what's fascinating is that this species evolved to return to the heights of the canopy. There are two types of tree kangaroos in Australia, both incredibly hard to see, but these ones are the most elusive. It's a Bennett's tree kangaroo. Their long tail can make them look a bit clumsy, but it is clear on this footage that he is using it for balance. I just love how he hops like a kangaroo, but then goes up like a human would climb a coconut palm. And what's lovely is that these animals are not bothered by the zip wires. I mean... No, you can hear everybody in the background. Everybody's zip, 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 going past it. And as you say, it was more aware of me being on the ground. Because you're out of the ordinary. Exactly. Right. Right, you know, yeah. It's nice to see that even for an experienced cameraman like Martin, this is an extraordinary encounter. Now the time has come for me to delve deeper into the heart of this prehistoric jungle. I'm starting a quest for one of the most extraordinary creatures of the forest. It's the stuff that dinosaurs are made of. A giant flightless bird with 12 centimetre claws that it can use to disembowel its adversaries. And this rainforest is one of the few places on Earth where you can find it, the cassowary. Take a look at this. This is what's called locally a bush olive. And this is one of the things the cassowary has been eating. And that, it's got a huge stone in it, but it really tastes like an olive. It's got that bitter taste. That's actually quite nice. One of the things that's interesting about cassowaries is that they can see blue. They like blue fruits. A lot of birds have difficulty seeing blue, particularly in Europe. The blueberries are very often the last left on the bush. And the cassowary, that likes the colour blue. No, no surprise that it is itself blue coloured. <laughs> cassowaries are notoriously difficult to find, but I think I'm on the right track. I can see here there's a cassowary trail going through the forest. They come, they come up and down this slope and from across this little gully here. What really gives it away though, is this, this pile of droppings here, cassowary scat. And you can see at a glance that it's full of seeds. And that's part of the secret. The cassowary is a vital component in the forest as a whole for dispersing and fertilizing seeds throughout the forest, really important. And that's the nature of a rainforest. Every part of this ecosystem is in some way dependent upon the other things around it, its neighbors. It's a complete system. These prehistoric creatures are so scarce that I'm using a quad bike to cover as much ground as possible and go deeper into the forest. I think I've spotted something in the trees. There is, there is. Hello, Cass. Hello, Cass. See if we can move across a little bit. It has a reputation for being aggressive, but like most animals, if you don't corner it, it will be fine. That's incredible. There's a male cassowary with chicks 
And you've just gone into the thickets here that you can't hear them, they just appear. That is amazing. The male bird does all of the rearing of the chicks. Cassowary parenting is quite unique. Once the female lays her eggs, she leaves them with the male who incubates them for two months and then raises the chicks for the rest of the year. Meanwhile, she goes off to mate and reproduce with other males. You see those chicks there with the banded stripes. What a wonderful thing to see. Beautiful camouflage. In the forest, the chicks remind me of the pattern on them to like wild boar, the little stripes you get on wild boar. Very, very good forest camouflage. Wonderful to see. So it's coming down there. Dad leading the chicks through the forest. Follow me. <laughs> Incredible bird. It's like looking at a dinosaur. It's got this, this great comb on top of its head. Ancient creature. And vanished. They move so gracefully through the forest. That's amazing. What a magnificent thing to see. That really is the pinnacle of my visit to the rainforest. It's an iconic bird, a vital, beautiful component of this forest. It's from a time gone by. That has to be one of the very best things you can see in wild Australia. Next time. They are quite feisty. <laughs> Isn't he feisty? Yes. <laughs>
This rainforest is here because of those mountains. That's the great dividing range. And they literally stop the moisture coming off of the sea, going inland. This precipitation here that powers this incredible landscape. The wet tropics cover a tiny fraction of Australia, and yet around 40% of the country's plant and animal species live here. This dense forest feels like a secret world that time forgot, and it is. Today, the rainforest is a window on a world that once was. I often think about those 18th century explorers who came here. It was equivalent of going into outer space in these tiny vessels. You know, when you come from Europe, going into these environments feels just the same. You feel like an 18th century naturalist. Everything is so different. And this environment is one of the best to explore. And I simply can't wait. Going down into the rainforest, the sun becomes a distant memory as I pass layers and layers of leaves and branches that we call the canopy. It acts as a roof of vegetation with only a third of the sunlight reaching the ground. There is something mystical about being here. Walking in the dappled light, it feels like I'm in a cathedral and the trees are the building blocks. I think I found the altar. Just look at the buttresses on this tree. This is a crow's foot ash, and uh, it's got these incredible swirling ribbon-like uh, buttress roots. And the buttresses have a, a few functions. One of the reasons that trees in the rainforest put out buttresses like this is literally to support themselves. You can see it's got a very wide base because the soils here are so thin. Typical of rainforest, you only have a very small amount of soil which is one of the reasons they're so vulnerable to being deforested. Once the trees have gone and the roots are missing, the soil just washes off the hills. But the other thing is and that, that in these gullies between the, the buttresses, trees trap leaves. So they, they create their own compost to provide nutrients. And that's really why these buttress roots swirl so much, because you get these great buckets here, which sometimes can be like miniature gardens. I'm going to peer very carefully because sometimes in these buttresses you find snakes. That is really magnificent. They had a lot of uses to native people use them to make handles for tools, to make drums, they're quite resonant, and even shields. They are really beautiful. Makes you feel very small and insignificant when you're standing next to a buttress root like this. I guess in my lifetime I've had the opportunity to walk in some incredible rainforests across our planet, but I don't think any of those places is quite as special as here, because this rainforest is the oldest on our planet. In fact, it's so old, it stretches back to the time of the great supercontinents. It's hard to believe that this forest once stretched across most of the land surface to be found on our planet. 150 million years ago, Australia was part of a supercontinent that was covered in rainforest. It included all the Southern Hemisphere's continents. Millions of years later, Australia became detached from this supercontinent and started drifting away. Like a giant Noah's Ark, it carried all sorts of species of animals and trees. <laughs> 